Hello and welcome to this tutorial about the Bezier masking tool in the new Vegas Pro 16. I've had a few days to play around with it and I just wanted to kind of go over what I've discovered and how you might be able to use it to create some kind of cool stuff. So what I have here to try to explain this, to kind of explain what the tool can really do, I have this head. It's just a, it's just a floating, like a floating head on a black background and it's changing. I, I did this on purpose so that you could see that it's changing in, this head is changing in, as it goes along, it's changing in, in location, size, and angle. And the new tracking tool can, can track on those five dimensions. So it tracks on location, which is the X and Y position. It tracks for size, which is the height and width of the object. And then it tracks on angle or, or rotation. So the new motion tracker, it tracks on those five dimensions. I'll show you that too in a minute. So what we're actually gonna be doing in this video is I'm going to, even though it's just a small figure, I'm actually gonna mask out his eyes and apply an effect just to his eyes using this tool, hopefully. I'll show you how, that, how we're gonna do that. Here we go. So to get to the tool, to get to the effect, I usually go to the first position, the first frame, you go to effects and you go to Bezier masking and you go add and you go okay. And it brings up the tool. Now the tool is kind of confusing at first because like right now it's blocked out the whole image. So we got to go into general options and this part is actually kind of confusing to me. It was confusing at first. What's interesting is this blend slider here. So the blend, the best way to think of it, I think is a, you can think of it as the mask effect control. But what's confusing is when it's on zero, the, the mask is on full power. And if you drag it to one, essentially the mask isn't on anymore. There is no mask, it's at zero power. So you can think of blend as the mask power. So at one, the mask is off. So if I click these invert and I click uh, mask effect, you'll notice that nothing is happening. And that's because the, the mask is essentially off. So if we turn it to, and now there's degrees of opacity of strength as you slide it. Mostly I think you'd either have it on one or zero. So what's weird is the mask is now at zero, but we don't see anything. And the reason we don't see anything is because the, the this is the mask and the tracking tool built into one. So that's kind of different that it's the tracking tool and the mask is all built into one. So what I said we wanted to do was mask his eyes while this face is going across the screen. And, and while his we'll be tracking his eyes, his eyes will be changing among those dimensions I said in location, size, and angle. So that's what we're gonna play around with today. So what we do is we got a choice of masks. If you, if you come up here, you've got a circle, a square, and a diamond. That's a choice you've got. And then if you come down here into mask, you've got a rectangle, an oval, and a diamond. So interestingly, I'm gonna skip curve for another day that seems to be like a custom mask. So I think an oval rectangle and a diamond probably will take care of most everything that you need. And also, of course, you've got that square that I mentioned earlier. So for this, since it's a face, we're going to go with oval. Now what's interesting is I changed it to oval, but because I'm on a black background, you can't really see it. So what I'm gonna have to do, so you can see the background, is let me get a solid color, a red, and pull this onto the scene here. So you can see the actual mask that's been created. Okay, so now you can see the mask more clearly here. You've got a circle, it goes straight to the center, a square, and then if you come down here, you've got diamond, and then a curve, like I said, is a custom mask. But like I said, we're gonna go with oval. So, but some reason, oh, maybe because uh, that, I don't know. Here we go, hold on. Oval, there we go. So now I'm gonna drag this. Now, here's one thing interesting. I've been clicking on these things and the controls are gone, even though that's the mask. If I click on the screen, nothing happens. I've noticed you gotta click over here on this control up here to actually activate the tool. So that's a little different. And uh, so I'll bring it up here. Whoops. And uh, here we should, uh, we should be able to turn this thing around. Here I can change the size of it. 
There should be a rotation tool here. Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Uh, here we go. So this control in the center allows you to rotate to the object. So that's oval. And then these allow us to, to squeeze in tighter. But like I said, we were going to mask his eyes. So let's, uh, let's keep turning this around there. And what's interesting is you can make these, these masks like pretty, pretty darn small. So we're really just going to, we're going to move this and get it right over his eyes, just like that. Yeah. So, and this, the thing that, about this, the reason I created this little animation or whatever is so that you could see it changing along the dimensions of uh, size and location and angle. So we've got our mask set. Now, if I, uh, if I come over here and I click invert, what it does is it, it's, it's probably easier to see the invert selection over here, but inverting. So this is our, it selects everything but the mask. So it reverses the, the effect that you're trying to create. So let's say I, I'm wanting to put the effect just on his eyes, but if I, if I hit invert, it's going to do the effect everywhere, but on his eyes. So the invert inverts the, where the effect is placed. So here, here it's going to be everywhere, but on his eyes and here the effect is going to be on his eyes. And then mask effect is kind of strange because when you click it, it turns the effect off and you're, you're, it's almost as if this were back at one again. So when you click mask effect, it actually, it actually deactivate it applies the mask to the whole the whole thing it basically turns the mask off because now everything's selected so that's kind of interesting as far as i can tell okay so now we've got our mask selected on his eyes now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come down here to the to the tracking tool oh and you can see here there's these are all the dimensions that it tracks on really it tracks on width width and height or, or size so if you come down here and we look at tracking and we go under options, you got normal, probably precision is, uh, is you'd probably always want that on high, wouldn't you? And then location. So if you got a mode of location, rotation and location, size, rotation and location. So location is the X and Y value. So wherever it's going up and down or sideways, left or right, it's going to track that. If the object changes in size, or it changes in its uh, rotation, like his eyes are this way, but they're more horizontal. But if it goes vertical, then it's going to track that change. So the the rotation is actually the angle. And then size, rotation, and location is uh, just what it says. It's going to be tracking the width, the height, the angle, and the x and y coordinates. So it's actually tracking five things when you when you do size, rotation, and location. But your object would need to be changing in size, be changing in rotation. So if your if your object that you're tracking is only changing in location and it's not changing in size or angle, then you just go with location. But if it's if the object is moving closer, it's going to be changing in size. So you'd probably go with size, rotation, and location. So this is going to track location is going to track on two coordinates, location and Rotation is going to track on three, X, Y, and uh, angle. Size, rotation, and location is going to track on five, five dimensions, which is quite a few, actually. So anyway, once you're in the, the first position, then what's kind of weird about this is when you, when you click Start, it just, it just goes. It, it does this message, and you don't really see anything happening other than these dots down here on the bottom. So, and you can see if we scroll down, we got, they created keyframes for width, height, angle, X and Y. So you can see, and you can see over here, it did appear to expand as his eyes got bigger over here. So it's got, we've got all our tracking information down here now. So now what we can do is let's, uh, let's go and add an effect. Let's add an effect so we can see how that all works out. So what's kind of fun to add is this bump map. I know a lot of people are pixelating everything. Now this is a good time to go back to explain the controls again. So if I pump up blend, you'll see the mask has been applied to his entire face. The effect has been applied to his entire face. If I drag that back to zero and I go invert, 
the effect would be applied to everywhere but his eyes, which might be an interesting effect, actually. And I click off invert, it's just his eyes. And then mask effect is the same as having blend at one. It, it seems like the effect applies to everything. So anyway, now, if we're just going to be applying the effect to his one location on his eyes, then what we're going to need to do is bring down a copy, a background plate to show the rest of him, because we're just going to be showing. So if we get this clip, it's the exact same clip we've had. You can see if I play this, the effect is just on his eyes now. And that looks like a pretty good track. But of course now we've got this line. So the effect is, is pretty clearly showing through, like he's got some weird thing going on. So what we can do to fix that is if we go into the effect and we would want, we would want to go into feather, we probably want to feather both on this. If we increase the feather, that should blur away. It also gets rid of some of the effect too. So you might want to be uh, judicious and not putting too much feather on here. So there we go. And now if he tracks it, it's just on his eyes, that effect, the bump map effect. I think the effect is pretty cool and it's it has a lot of applications as far as doing specific color grading on an actor's face where you want just the actor's face, a, a moving actor, where you want just an effect, a colorization applied just to that actor's face against the background. The only thing I'm, I wish is that you could track to a, a null object. So far, it doesn't look like you can do that. Right now, you can only, the, the tracking is tied to the actual, the effect. The mask and the tracking is one and the same. It's not, uh, it's not different. It's not a different thing. This is the, the mask and the tracking tool. <laughs> all in one. So anyway, I, I hope to make another video later explaining more about the tool, but so far I like it. It's a huge step up for the program. I, I really believe this. And once we can track to a, a null object, then we can start adding in all kinds of special effects. So I see that as the next step for the program. So if you have any questions or you have any more insights yourself, please uh, feel free to comment. Take care and have a great day.